What's good, everyone? This is Dr. Nee Darko. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so that you're always up to date on the new uploads as well as alerts on this show. The other thing that you can do to help build this community is make sure you leave a comment below. Let us know what you like, what you don't like about the show. And ultimately, let us know who's winning these arguments because I need to know that I'm beating Renee in these debates. Run the tape. Um, one of my favorite parts of doing a podcast is so many people ask us questions and um, it's been a lot trying to answer all of your questions in a timely fashion, but I've seen them all. I read them all. I think about them all. I just may not type them all back. <laughs> I may not respond to you back in a timely fashion, but I know that you guys are ans- asking these questions. I love to answer them and I know everything just so you guys know. I know everything now. So keep asking away. So this is from Elizabeth Ediong, I think. And this was on YouTube and it says, I want to be a part-time doctor. Can I be that in EM, emergency medicine, pediatrics, and radiology? These are the specialties I'm interested in. Also, I want to make good money, but working lesser days. Also, please, can I locum as a consultant? Absolutely. So yeah. So this is a really good question, Elizabeth. So basically, can you be a part-time doctor being EM, pediatrics, radiology? So the question is, what is part-time? Part-time in essence is, um, so basically you have full-time employee where you're working. Listen, for those who aren't doctors, doctors work more than, and professionals work more than 40 hours a week, right? We're talking about like close to about 80 hours a week, right? And then, um, you know, you multiply that by how many weeks in a month, and then you multiply that by the year and you go from there. And that's how you determine if you're full-time. And then Part-time is going to be half of that or some semblance of some type of fraction of full-time. You know, um, definitely in EM, you can do that, right? Because in EM, I think it's very, it's very acceptable for a locums type of lifestyle or independent type of lifestyle. And in that type of lifestyle, nobody's keeping track of when you work, how you work. Basically, it's you work and then you get paid. And you can look at it in two ways, which is, hey, like... I'm just going to keep working, right? Because I can keep working and I'm going to keep getting paid. Or you could just be like, look, I'm going to work until I get the certain amount of money that I want to reach. And then after that, I can take some time off. So that can be anywhere from some people, you know, they only work six months out of the year. Right. We had a, we did an article once from a guy who, a urologist who works half the year and makes 400 grand a year. Right. If you're really smart with your money, like that is a great way to live. The question is, you know, when you're young in your career, do you want to work like that? If you're old in your career, do you want to work like that? Like you have to decide what you want to do and how you want to work, because this ain't residency anymore, baby. (laughs) This ain't residency. This ain't fellowship. There's nobody keeping track. It's up to you. So Elizabeth is saying that she wants to be part time. So, yes, absolutely. You can do locums radiology. You can do locums pediatrics. You can do locums EM. Um, and yeah, you can make really good money working lesser days. So you can, it's, it's all there for you. It's just that you have to be very smart in making sure that, um, I'll leave it to you like this before I even get to that point, there's sacrifices that need to be made in order for you to even get to that point. First of all, you got to be able to play the game, right? To play the game is you got to be able to make sure you finish residency, you finish fellowship, Whatever is after that point, like getting boards done, you got to finish all of that stuff. Then the next thing after that is the next sacrifice you got to make is what are you going to do about your loans, right? Like what are you going to do to make sure that nobody can tell you what to do, how to work, when you want to work? And if some of those motivations might be a couple of things, one, how are you going to pay off your loan debt and or how are you going to pay off credit card debt and or if it's going to be paying off a really hella mortgage that you can't afford, that's going to change your mathematics a little bit. Right. Even kids, that might change your mathematics a little bit. Right. But the question is, is what kind of lifestyle do you want? It's not going to be perfect. But if the ultimate goal is to have complete control of your life and how you work and when you work and how much you work, there's going to have to be ma- some type of sacrifice is going to have to be made. The question is, is, is that sacrifice that you're making enough to, you know, stop you from going forward with this type of lifestyle that you want, which is work when you want, make as much as you want, possibly get a significant amount of time off. That's the way I look at it. And that's how I talk about with with folks is in order to get whatever you want, just know that there's always a cost benefit type of ratio. It's never going to be a perfect world. But if you know me, you know that I say everybody should do locums. In some portion, right? You ain't got to do it 100% of the time, but you should at least do it to a point where 
you at least get the taste of it. Because I think if you got the taste of it, you're like, yeah, I like this. And I don't want to go back. So after doing residency and fellowship, I decided that I was going to do locums. So like all of my fellows, my co-fellows were interviewing, you know, for academic positions. This is when I was at Miami. They were interviewing for for academic positions. And I was interviewing. I was just trying to get back home to Jersey, but I was interviewing at places. Uh, my father had prostate cancer, so I was trying to get back. And um, the interviews were great. But the negotiations were less than stellar. Let's leave it to you like that. There were a lot of places that would say you'd be on call. And when you get the contract, they didn't want to properly delineate how often you'd be on call. A lot of places didn't want to delineate. Well, if you are on call and you go past a certain threshold, how much you would get paid. And that's important. And I think that one of the biggest disservices that attendings, folks who've kind of done the process before us, one of the biggest things that I think they do to us is they don't tell you how important it is for lifestyle as well as in essence, how are you going to finance your life, right? If you're going to finance your life through working and, you know, by being a doctor for the rest of your life, like it's important for you to understand how you're going to do that. And a lot of that has to do with how you negotiate, how you get paid for call, how you get paid for doing operations. If you believe in that, you know, RVUs or, you know, procedures or how many patients you see that's very important. And if you don't know much about that as an attending, you should at least give your opinion to your residents and say, hey, look, I wish I knew more about RVUs or I wish I knew more about locums or I wish I knew more about X, Y and Z so that I can make these type of decisions now as opposed to. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. And if you go into locums, you're killing your career or I don't know anything about private practice, but if you go into private practice, you're killing your career. And I think that's a big disservice to folks who are training and yeah, I know you're scared as an attending, but it doesn't mean that you should pass that down to your residents and even young attendings. So that's what I would say is a big disservice. Definitely. I would say that's a big disservice. And um, to be honest with you, I forgot what the bigger point <laughs> of what I was trying to make um, is, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I think we, 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 the decisions, like, I think one of the really interesting things about medicine is the path to becoming a doctor is extremely unique, right? It's different than the corporate world. It's different than sports. Um, it's, it's very different, but the things that affect everybody else in their job in terms of corporate you know, the corporate things that happen in job, middle management, all that stuff, that stuff still exists in medicine and healthcare, just so you know. So if you go in thinking, oh, my life is going to be different. Yeah. I mean, like how you do your day, your day to day operations is different than how someone, than 99% of people who work, right? Right. 99% of people don't get a chance to talk to patients and let patients, the patient will let you know about things that they don't even tell their partner or be able to, you know, put a chest tube in someone or save someone's life. Like those are things that, it's extremely unique to what we do, right? But yeah, there's middle management. There are people who have like degrees that are less than what you have, no shade, um, but they might get paid more than you um, or uh, they have control over you than what you thought you would have when you first started. And that could be a problem. And if you are willing to do some work in the beginning, which is what me and Renee did, that kind of leads you down a path of kind of being able to do what you want to do. I don't know who's texting me during this time. Don't they know that I'm doing a podcast? But yeah, that's, that's, um, that's kind of how I look at it. You know, if you're going to want to be a part-time doctor, just understand that you're going to play the game for a little bit and then you have to decide it's going to be the red pill or the blue pill. That's what Renee says all the time. 
And if you take the red pill, pill which may be, you know, the, the prototypical traditional pathway, just be prepared, pre- prepare for this. If you're going to take the blue pill, which is going to be something completely different, and it could be locums, it could be private practice, it could be social media, it could be whatever it may be. Just know that it comes with a whole host of other issues that, you know, you should be prepared for. But I can tell you right now as a locums doc, if I don't have to go back, I won't go back. No sirree. If I can fight it, won't do it. So that's my thoughts on that. Good question, though, Elizabeth. And I'm glad you appreciate our videos on YouTube. Guys, also make sure we're on, we're on YouTube. Check us out on YouTube, all right?